All right, folks, welcome to Nino's Corner.tv. I am joined once again with Colin Flume from Noble Gold. Uh, everyone's worried, Colin. I mean, seriously, this looks bad. It's looking worse and worse. I mean, uh, it, you know, uh, we just got a 45-day stopgap. Um, it, things look grim. I mean, everyone I talk to on my shows, everyone I bring up from Jim Willie to Bo Pony to Juan O'Savin are all staying, man, that they're going to, the dollar is done. It's on its way out. And it, mm -hmm. it worries a lot of people. Like, what should we do? What, what are we going to do? A lot of people are going into crypto. Um, me, that's a gamble. I uh, heard a lot of good things about Bitcoin. I've heard a lot of great things about XRP, but I know the one thing that's stable always is gold and silver. Yeah, no, and, and it, it, it makes sense. I mean, I think people, you know, you look at this country, you look at what big corporations are doing and the way that they're being so cautious right now um, on, on so many different levels. Uh, they're not hiring, you know, the jobs that people want, you know, 65,000 and above. Uh, underemployment is, you know, if you look at true employment numbers uh, above 7%, you know, because obviously the 3.6% number doesn't include uh, once people haven't found a job after four weeks or people that, that are underemployed. So they want to work 40 hours, but they work 18 hours, for instance, or people that just drop off out of the workforce altogether because they haven't been able to find the right job. So the real employment numbers are well above 7%. And if we use that number, which I think is the true number, we would be able to say that we're we're in a recession uh, because obviously one of the indicators that keeps the Fed and the, and the president from saying we're in a recession is that the number they use is below 4%. Uh, but if if the true number was above 7, and, and some people believe it's above 10 or even higher, um, then, I, then I think we would say that the, the economy's uh, in trouble. And, and that's it's, why people are, like you said, they're nervous right It's now. not going to get any better because what we're looking at here with the illegal, illegal immigration the, the influx of this tens and thousands just here. Okay. And this is putting a strain on our resources, our infrastructure, uh, right. all smaller, lower end jobs, mid level to lower end jobs are now getting taken over by AI. And if you don't believe right. that folks, just go to San Francisco. And I saw for the first time I've ever seen it, self-driving cars for Uber drivers. I couldn't believe it. So their jobs are done. They're done. So yeah. now they have self-driving cars for the Uber drivers. Okay. Um, and all these mid-level, low-level jobs are going to be taken while, all the while, they're bringing in this mass influx of illegal immigrants with no job skills, very limited, that just know a life of crime. This is the pur purposeful and uh, orchestrated, engineered takedown of America. And I know you're not saying it, I'm saying it, but uh, I'm the one saying this. And so it, they're getting ready, it looks like to me, to pull the plug in some kind of way. It's gonna, it, it, they're gonna, we're going to go into this digital dollar. How safe of a bet is gold and silver right now as we are going into this? Because if if my guests are right, if my guests are right, then there is going to be some kind of intervention with Trump in which there's going to be um, a transfer of, I guess we're going to be in this transition period where gold and silver, gold and silver are going to be what you want to have. That's going to be what you want to have. And my, I know a lot of this may be conspiracy for you, but to my audience, it is not. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the interesting thing about where we're at and, and you know, I always look at who's buying and, and of gold and silver and what's been happening. So you have central bank buying very, very consistent. Uh, there's only been one country that has sold any gold this year, which is Turkey. And they they needed a, they needed the money for whatever reason. And so they sold some gold. But you have this heavy central bank buying. Uh, you have global demand at a very high rate. Um, yet the price is actually dropped. It's actually down. We're down, you know, gold and silver are down 11, about 11% this year. And it reminds me a lot of what happened in 2008 and 2009, where it was like, you had this kind of calm before the storm. And then they went into quantitative easing, uh, where they just really expanded the money supply. Uh, and, and I think a lot of people believe that's going to eventually happen. They're going to have to expand and, and, and inflate the money supply again to get the the wheels turning in the economy, because I, you know, I, I think that when you look at where economy is this year, we have an election year coming up next year, something does need to change. Uh, otherwise people are going to move in a different direction. So I think the current administration is, 
knows they have to do something to get the economy moving. Uh, otherwise, you know, there's no chance for them at all. So there's there's lots of uh, uh, developments happening uh, behind the scenes, I believe, that will allow gold and silver to have a pretty big year next year. I mean, gold sitting in the mid 1800s, silver sitting at twenty one dollars uh, and some change. And then, you know, no one's talking about platinum right now. Um, you know, I was I was talking to a friend about platinum jewelry and we were just kind of go over in different things. And he thought platinum was, you know, well above the price of gold, you know, because you think about platinum jewelry, just the right. idea of platinum in general. And there was many years that platinum was more expensive for gold. But actually, the numbers today, platinum costs, it, you know, spot prices in the, in the mid $800 range and gold's in the 1850s. So platinum, I think, is a sneaky metal. Uh, people need to talk about it. I have a few different things here, but this is a platinum uh, one ounce uh, eagle here. Platinum is a metal that people should be looking at us because they're, they what need What is an ounce of platinum numbers. cost again? So that this this coin you're probably looking at about nine and a quarter nine fifty for this coin right here. Um, this is a one ounce platinum uh, uh, American Eagle coin. So you're looking at a, a coin. You're looking at a metal that they're using in catalytic converters. They're using it. They actually in the Ford F one fifty, which is probably the top selling car in the United States. They use over three hundred dollars in platinum in every one of those that's built. So the, and this metal is not easy to find. This is a very difficult metal so to a, find. It's, out it's there. like a great conductor. Is that what it is? A heat? great conductor, and it's and it's used in many different industries, but it, heavily uh, in the automotive industry is is one of the big uses there. And it's going to continue to grow. And they're actually pulling back on palladium. See, palladium was fulfilling this void for a long time, uh, but they're pulling back on palladium, and now they're using more platinum. So all these cars. And listen, there's a shortage of cars all over the world. They're going to continue. To, they need to make more cars. This is a big component of it. So platinum is is going to is going to. Uh, I think it's going to be a very uh, important right. industrial metal. But I think uh, David, to to your point, like with the economy, I think that's there's there's some indicators here that that lead us to believe that we are in a recession and a, and a bigger recession is coming. And I'll tell you what it is. You have the inverted yield curve, which has been going on for about a year which is the biggest telltale sign that the biggest money, the biggest endowments, the biggest bond traders in the world are pushing these very short bonds to a very high price, which means they want to have liquid. They want to be liquid. That's why they're not buying five-year notes. That's why they're not buying 10-year notes. You know, five and 10-year notes are more than double the, the price they were two years ago. I mean, you can get a 10-year note in the 4.5% range. But short-term money, short-term bonds is even more. It's paying even a higher return because there's so much money in these three-month bonds and they're waiting. You know, they're like, you know, it's like a, a cheetah looking for its prey. They're waiting. So you have these trillions of dollars waiting for a collapse. And wow. they believe there's going to be a collapse uh, next year. And that's why... They're waiting in the sidelines and and they're sitting in the bond market. So you you believe the collapse is going to happen next year? Yeah, I do. I do think it's going to be a collapse next year, and I think that what they're going to have to do is the Fed is going to have to go away for for anything to happen good in our economy right now. They need to figure out a way to get these rates down. So and there's only what you know the one way that they can do it is they have a, some kind of black swan event. They have to have something big happen. So that they can go. I agree with you them. on that. I yeah. totally agree with you on that. Yeah, yeah. I've they, had they, people they, on my show like Jim Willie and, and 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 different guests come on and talk about, um, and 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 they're sounding the alarm bells, right? They're sounding the alarm bells, going, you know, the you know the that it's coming. Um, is it possible that we could see gold at ten thousand? I mean, Jim Willie says, man, we could see it go through the roof. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think it's very, it's very feasible. Um, I think that there's going to be a flight to safety. You know, this year you're still seeing a lot of things happen. You know, like this week was a really interesting week. So you had, you know, over the weekend you had the potential government shutdown and then it was averted. So people dumped safe assets and they went into uh, riskier assets. So equities were up, but safe gold and silver had a big drop. Like the biggest drop, silver's down one dollar. Uh, on Monday, which is a massive drop, you know, you're talking about like a six, 7% drop, you know, you're, you're seeing things that don't make sense that you are seeing short term money taking risks, and maybe they can profit in the day to day, 
But I think the long-term money is is waiting, as I mentioned, in bonds, and they're they're waiting for the bigger opportunity. So I think long-term gold, where it's sitting right now with inflation, I mean, in an inflationary period we're in right now, where inflation is, I mean, the government reports four and a half to five percent, but let's say it's double. Gold should be doing at least that, if not better. Yet we're down. Gold's down eleven percent uh, this year. Silver's down similar numbers this year. So a lot well, time of time to buy. It's a it, it's a it's a big buying opportunity, I think, for for people that haven't bought or people that are looking to sort of double down. And you know, there's a lot of people that bought early pandemic uh, from us, and you know, they remember gold in the fourteen hundred range. And then it just skyrocketed and it went from 1400 all the way above 2000. So, you know, we know that these bull runs can happen very quickly. Uh, Just people have to be sort of prepared for it. So it's, it's a very uh, unique time. I think that, um, you know, the, the scary thing about interest rates, uh, Dave is David, is that you would see in a normal fed, like in a, in a situation where the fed wasn't trying to just destroy the economy, you would see them gradually raise rates because even though they say they have to stave off inflation, they also have so much of a responsibility too to kind of keep the economy going. I mean, there, there, you can't. I mean, our rates are double. the The average mortgage in January of last year, the average mortgage was eleven hundred and twenty three dollars. Today, that same mortgage for the same house is twenty three hundred and forty two dollars. It's an eighty five percent increase. How does that? How does the government? rationalize saying that they are doing a good job helping average Americans when the average Americans to buy a house today is 85% more expensive. If it was it's engineered this way, it's all engineered, man. This Correct. Is, they're taking down America. And I yeah, listen, I know some people, you know, my audience knows you're talking to my audience. They know this is engineered. Yeah. This is, this is well, well contrived. And, and, and you have BlackRock and all these companies buying homes. And, you know, it's interesting, you know, everyone's reporting on this, that they're buying homes and they're going out and they're making offers and people are getting text mess. And I've had friends, they're getting text messages. Hey, you want to sell your house? And then you, if you dive into it more, it's these big, it's the, you know, the top three, this BlackRock and Vanguard, you know, these are the guys that are behind it because think about it. If they know that if interest rates are up and you got you lose your job and you go, okay, I got to sell. So they're picking up houses, let's say at, you know, 150 to 300 bucks a foot construction, you know, the actual right. cost. Right now, we know most places across the country, it's going to cost you between 450 and depending on where you are on some of the coasts, it could cost you 800 to $1,000 today to rebuild that cost. So this is massive spike in interest rates gives these massive corporations an opportunity to come in and buy houses on the cheap. And that's really the problem with what's happening. If if we saw a 30% increase and they said, hey, we got to stay here because inflation, I would say, okay, listen, they're trying to do the best they can. But for interest rates to go up 85% for the right average person, and then the job, the great jobs, as you mentioned, a lot of them are going to AI, a lot of them are, are are going away altogether. I mean, they're not, there's, there's just no, gone. They're, coming, they're just gone. So it's, you can kind of see they are trying to really destroy uh, the middle class person. A hundred percent. It's just going to be very wealthy and poor. Yeah. And they're even taking out the very wealthy. I mean, th- yeah. that's going to even be limited. So let me ask you this, man. Like my audience always asks me, <clears throat> I don't have the money. I don't have much money to buy into gold and silver. What kind of programs do you offer? Yeah, uh, these people that want to get involved with Noble Gold because I, I yeah, read yeah. a lot of these ads and people are like, I don't have the money. I don't sure. have the money. Well, uh, most people are, they don't know. They don't always know that they have probably an old 401k with some money in there. Since I've been doing this, you'd be shocked how many people I said, you know, look at all the places you worked. Have you checked all those 401ks? And there's a lot of found money out there. I've had people find go find an account. And they worked you know, a regular job and they found, oh, I got $12,000 in this old account that I never moved. And so there is a lot of found money out there. And I think it's important to look at that stuff. But the reason that gold and silver are not cheap and the reason that it's important to have it is because if you think about it, these are actually the only assets that you own besides your house that you own by yourself, right? Everything else you buy, you're buying a share of something. Right. You're 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 just pulling share of a stock, share of something. You're buying a share. This stuff you're going to own. So when you own something by yourself, it is more expensive. 
But guess what? When you buy this stuff, there's no debt. You own it. So you're buying something that's a protection against the other debt that everybody has. Everybody has a mortgage for the most part. So you're buying stuff that doesn't have debt to help you in, in good times and bad times over the stuff that has debt. So, but do you, do you, do you tell the people, you suggest that the people hold on to this themselves, you mail them the gold and silver? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We can, I mean, listen, we could store it in a deposit. We have companies that we use. We don't store it. We send it to a third party. It's in your name. You can do that too, but we ship gold uh, directly to your doorstep. And, you know, this year was a, a big year for that because obviously what was happening to the banks in, in uh, February, March, and April, people were trying to get out of the bank. So we, yeah, this stuff right here, 10 ounce silver bar. Um, this is a one ounce platinum uh, American Eagle. I got some. Uh, uh, Canadian and it's pretty Maple incredible. Like how much gold you get for the, for like the, the money that I've spent on gold, I get it. And I'm like, wow. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, this is, this is, you know, $2,000 in gold. That's, right Yeah. Here. That's what I'm saying. That, that's two yeah, grand gotta, right there. I'm sorry. It's, whoa. Whoa. Don't drop the gold. <laughs> $4, Jeez. Don't, don't trust me. With your gold. No, I probably, it'll come in a better package and I won't drop. I won't, that's, that's, um, this is also, I wanted to bring this out, David, because this is such a fun set. And we just, so we sold these earlier this year. This is every Silver Eagle uh, graded at MS69. This is every Silver Eagle since 1987 to current day. It's 39 coins. So MS69, MS70 is the best. That's the best quality. MS69 is just below. I mean, you wouldn't even be able to tell. So this set is 39 coins. Um, if you had it in MS70, this this set's worth twenty twenty two thousand dollars, but one grade below MS sixty nine, we have this whole set for about two thousand dollars, give or take. No way. Yeah, so you can get all of these. So that's something, and but it's it, the reason we don't sell these all the time is because we have to find them all in this quality, and then we have to send them to the grading company, you know, and then we get them back. So we've put these together. I think we have like maybe twenty sets. So I, I want recommend, a set. Huh? I want a set. You want a set? Okay. I'll set this set. This is my set. I'll set this set aside for you. Uh, I was going to give it to one of my kids, but you know what? They'll be fine. Don't, <laughs> I don't want to take it I don't need kids. it. Yeah, just, you'll take it for my kids. It's fine. That's okay. They're going to be okay. They're going to look like the asshole. On yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't even know the value. They don't even know the value of this stuff. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah. So, this is a really fun set. Uh, this. So, I would do this, you know, and some gold. Uh, you know, some, some bars, maybe some kilo bars, you know, this is what we sell at Noble Gold. This is the fun. This is the great thing about these. And, and listen, these MS, this 1986 MS 69, there's not many of these in MS 69. So it's cool because you're getting a set that has some numismatic value, right? It's got some, some rare core value, but you're also getting a lot of silver too you know it's not and it's, it's he but, who, you know, that's that's what we try to do is right you, and know, you don't want to be the person who hesitates on this because man it's coming it is we all see the signs yeah and and so you think the collapse is coming next year i i've heard yeah this, i i, I heard do this. i think that we'll see a, a heavy collapse next year and i think that there's gonna have to be a sh i think there's gonna be some dramatic changes in, in how the the money is held the way money is moving there you know the cbdc stuff is coming out every day and Listen, there's like 115 countries in the world that that are trying to get involved in these CBDCs. Uh, you know, one just point blank, they obviously want to see what you're doing with your money, right? I mean, that's right. I mean, more than anything. Let's be honest. That's the number one thing they want to do is they want to see everything that you're buying, and the CBDC gives them absolutely that ability to do it. So that's the first thing. Two, it, it gives them a level of of control in terms of where you're moving your money, what you're doing it. You know, the cool thing about this gold and silver is that, and I do, you know, I fly and I do interviews in different places. You know, I, I could put, you know, I, I took a, I had a kilo of gold that I took to an interview, which is a, you know, a $60,000 gold bar, put it in my backpack and I was across the country, right? And, and you know, who could- 60,000 gold, $60,000 gold bar? Yeah, wow. 60,000 kilo, kilo gold bar. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit bigger than this. That's it's a little bit bigger than that. Insane. So, so that's the, that's the thing is that people like about this is that you have the liquidity, right? If you need money, you sell this, anyone will buy this gold bar anywhere in the world. And also if you need to go anywhere with it, you can go places with it and, and it's easy to move. Whereas the CBDC, I mean, you see it happen in places, you know, China's 
it's been happening to Chinese citizens for a long, long time where they won't let them buy in certain places. You know, all, yeah. Toronto, Toronto was built on Canadian, on uh, Chinese investors. I don't know if you're aware of that, but that's how Toronto, Toronto's real estate market. I don't know what the percentages are, but I, it's a massive number of Chinese people that have bought condos because they wanted to get the money out. And they stopped it. They told them they can't. They limited how much they can move out. And there's these laws in place because citizens there, they don't feel comfortable with what's going on in China. They want to get their money out. This culture of the CBDC, and, and I know for people that are comfortable on their phone and they feel like, well, what's the difference? Is this just like a credit card? Fundamentally, there is a difference when, it, when a, a CBDC does come around and the ability for the government to just tweak things so easily uh, I don't think it's long term the greatest thing. And that's why, you know, our country was built on having gold as a currency. It was our original currency. Everything we did was was had some back behind it with gold and it and it protected people. And it, and really, if you look at the demise of the middle class, it was really in 1971 when, when officially went off the gold standard is when we started to see a lot of the inflation start to, to go rampant in this country. That's when things went from, you know, it was going okay. You know, there was a lot of people in the 60s and 70s that built a lot of wealth and they were able to buy homes and inflation was under control. But if you really look at it, well, once we got off the gold standard in 1971, that's really the, you know, the long demise of, of the middle class was just based on the fact that they've been able to inflate the dollar to, you know, oblivion, basically. My, my question is this. So what happens if and let's just talk worst case scenario here. What happens if they do, I mean, it, it'll always remain stable, right? Even if they do bring in this digital dollar, let's say, let, let, even if they do bring in the digital currency, I mean, if you have gold and silver, you'll still be able to buy something with that, correct? Or people uh, yeah, still be trading? It's, or like, yeah. See, I'm I, wondering I, how I, that'll work because, yeah. well, hold on, let me finish my thought because I thought, because if, because I'm betting, I'm betting on the situation that Trump, gets put back in there. Okay. That's, that's what I'm going on. Okay. And I know that people that have gold and silver are going to be very, very wealthy. That's what I've been told. That's what all my guests have told me, hold on to your gold and silver. You're going to be very, very wealthy. Now, worst case scenario, let's say they get, they accomplish this digital dollar and it goes that direction. What happens to the gold and silver? So it's interesting. I would, I listen, I don't know, but I, I will tell you this scenario is what happened in 1933 is that, you know, basically for uh, two years, they told everybody that we're going to start going off, uh, you know, having a gold back system and using gold coinage. And so they set the price of gold. The government said, you turn in your gold and we'll pay you 20 or $21. Yeah. And then the next year after they did that, and some people sold and a lot of people didn't. And I, the reason that a lot of, I know a lot of people didn't sell is because you can still buy those coins, right? You can buy those pre-1933 coins. So a lot of people held them. Uh, they didn't turn them into the government. The next year, they changed the price from the $21 up to above $30. So they they manipulated the price up, which benefited the government, right? Because they basically bought gold at a, you know, a 40% cut. So I, listen, I don't know what will happen today, but I think the people that can hold on, as you mentioned, whatever happens in the government, if they can just hold on, eventually the true value will, will come out. And, you know, I don't think it's a surprise, like on accident that you have countries like China is the biggest net buyer of gold this year. Russia is a massive net buyer of gold. They, the BRIC countries were talking about having a gold back currency, the BRIC nation. I mean, if you went back 20 years and you said these BRIC countries, this conglomerate together is going to have five new uh, countries join. I think Haiti just joined recently also, not that they have much of a economy, but five countries joined the BRIC nations this year. It's a big change from where we were 15, 20 years ago. I don't think people thought Huge. That, that was that was the alliance right. that was going to grow over this year. But people are fed up with US policies. They're fed up with our debt. They're, they're look, you know, they look at China and Russia and they go, listen, they, they, they're not perfect, but these are strong industrial. I mean, money talks, business talks. These are industrial countries that are, are, have massive economies. And they just, I think they believe that we've become, become too much of a consumer nation and that we're not producing enough. And they're, 
you know, these countries are trying to tag on to what they believe the next real superpowers are. Uh, and that's why they joined the BRIC nation. So it's, you know, all these things happening behind the scenes, these countries building these alliance with, with, you know, these, this group it is a sign for me that, that people are preparing for, for a worst case scenario here in the U S and this may be a ridiculous question, but I'm just curious. Do you have like payment plans or something for some people that don't <laughs> have a lot of money and they want to get, they want to invest in silver and gold or yeah. something so, for them? I don't because a, I think that I like the idea that this is an asset that doesn't have debt. If I, if I put you on a payment plan, there's some debt component there, right? Right, right, right. Two, right. But some people are desperate right now. They'll do anything to get yeah, silver. The other reason I don't, I don't do it, frankly, is that I don't want to hold anybody's money, right? Mm -hmm. I like the I like the the transaction the way it is that you pay I send you your product I don't want to hold anybody's product I don't want to have anybody's debt I'm not in that business I'm right, in the business right. of people buy. and it's it's not that I don't want to help people and and I think if they if they do want to get gold and silver there's shops locally that they can go and buy smaller amounts of gold and silver that fulfill the amount that they want to buy so I support anyone buying gold and silver I just I'm in the business of of really focusing on clients that are going to get it. They're going to get something debt free and it's a good transaction. And then when they want to sell it, you know, I've seen people, they, they, they borrow money against gold and silver. And there's a lot of these schemes that are out there. And I, and my thought is my ideal situation is that you buy gold, silver, platinum for me, five years gold sitting at, you know, $5,000 an ounce, silver sitting at $75 and platinum's at, you know, two, 3000. And you go, you know what, I'm going to, you know, I want to open up a business or, you know, I want to do, I want to travel. I want, and you come back to me and I buy it from you and you, you're on your way and it's a clean transaction. So that's why I'm not in the debt business. There's, and it's scary. I don't know if you've seen the numbers on all these um, consumers that are using these products to buy stuff. I mean, the numbers are, are outrageous. Jeez. People are just spending way more than they have. Credit card debt in the U.S. just hit 1 trillion. Uh, so, you know, I'm a big believer in like, you got to have a uh, pay for what you can afford. And so that's why we've always kind of done it this way at Noble Gold. Colin Plume, ladies and gentlemen, Noble Gold. So Colin, man, I appreciate it. So that's mine right there, right? This is yours. This is yours. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell, I'm going to tell my daughter that's no, no, no Christmas for her. And that oh, you're not. So <laughs> 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 Maybe look like nah, the nah. biggest asshole on YouTube. <laughs> your nah, kids nah, I'll get present, man. Yeah, I'll get this out to you, and uh, yeah, let me know what you think about the set because I think this is a, such a such a cool. I'll, set. I'll show it on the program too. Yeah, and if anybody wants this, you can you can buy this. You know, add it with other products. Uh, MS sixty nine silver set. So when you call and just ask for this, uh, free guides this month. Anyone looking to get information, and you know, just to remind people, we're an American company. Uh, you're going to talk to a live person at Noble Gold. You're not talking to a computer. You're not talking to somebody that's going to be overseas. You know, we believe in this. This is, you know, this is what we do. Uh, read our reviews. Uh, check us out. I want you to, you know, dive into us. I'm not afraid of of that. We're, we're a good company, family-owned business. So, uh, you know, anyone that's looking to get information, just give us a call and, uh, you know, love to help anybody out there that's looking to learn more about metals. Well, I, I love this company, Colin. So thank you so much, man. I appreciate you coming on. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon.